A CSA has by now become a fairly familiar acronym to many Vermonters and others who frequent farmers markets. It stands for Community Supported Agriculture, a system where community members or customers of a farm, often but not always growers of organic produce or something close to it, agree to acquire a certain amount of produce each week or month to help the farm sustain its operations. Up in South Londonderry, a farm has added a twist to this. The Anjali farm grows a variety of medicinal plants, along with other vegetables, and offers what could be called a community-supported apothecary. Lenny Mazumdar and Helena Wu explained what they do. Okay, well, I think we've both had experience with um, vegetable CSAs, and we wanted to do something different, and because we were all herbalists, we said, well, let's, let's try an herbal CSA. Um, and just expose people to the range of things that you can do with plants, you know, to improve your health. Um, and so we decided to do it. Yeah, during COVID, we started having meetings and it was also a nice way to get together uh, with people that were nearby and that we knew were safe to hang out with. Although we did a lot on Zoom as well, mm -hmm. a lot of our meetings on Zoom. But, um, you know, we all wanted to do something good for the community and something different and this was like the obvious thing to start doing. Um, I have a line of products called Lotus Moon Medicinals which I've been making since 1997. Started in Arlington in fact um, and on Wild Farm. Um, but and then Emmett grows a bunch of different in addition to vegetables he grows herbs as well as, as do I. And so making products and having products in a bag to pick up once a month seemed like a great thing to do. Um, there were also, you know, cut flowers in the, in the bag. There were, you want to mention some of the things you put in? Yeah, um, we had salves and sprays and uh, lotion. We made bath salts. Teas. And spice blends and teas, tinctures, yeah, tinctures, syrups, um, vinegars, honeys, <laughs> uh, quite a wide range. Because um, I think that was one of my goals anyway, is to really show people that you can do a lot of things um, with the plants, um, and yeah, just to give them a taste of that, and also try to address common ailments people might have that are easily taken care of with or with plants. Um, so, you know, a tummy ache or a, or a headache or a irritating rash or something like that, um, that you could um, use these plants that you can find either wild crafting, you know, that grow wild or growing your own um, self and then making the products. And I also really love teaching classes. So um, in the past, I've offered lots of classes of how to, how to just do these things on your own. Um, she walks you around her garden mm -hmm. and outdoors and she can do a wild plant identification um, walk. And then also Helena teaches on how to make mm -hmm. um, these products. But you know, if I was going to, like I make um, a spray that's good for poison ivy, helping dry that up. And so I know the plant. Jewelweed is the main ingredient. Um, and sometimes I'll put plantain. Sometimes I'll, I'll mix it up different formulas. Um, but herbs in there to help, you know, soothe the itch and pain and dry up the poison ivy. Um, so if I know those plants and then I know how to prepare them. So usually if I'm making a spray, I'll make a tincture. So that could either be um, macerating or dissolving, uh, uh, soaking the plants in alcohol or um, vinegar. You could use vinegar as well. And then um, straining it out. And then you might put some more water because it's a little stingy when you spray it on. Um, and then put that in a spray bottle. So easy. <laughs> So, and we have some shares that want, that came from far away, requests that came from far away, so we call them ship shares, so we could ship them to, we had a person from Chicago, another one from Rhode Island, a couple from Rhode Island, another one from New York, so mm -hmm. we would ship shares as well since it was just once a month. And the products are, you know, they, they can last, 
Um, so that was the other novel thing about this CSA is that it was a shippable mm. sharing. Right. And for the local people, we could um, also put in fresh, fresh products. So plants in the beginning of the season, plants, and then later on, like the fresh herbs, uh, something like that, or an herbal bouquet or, um, you know, whatever we could think up. <laughs> it stretches our creativity as well. Helena has a big medicinal and vegetable garden at home with her partner. Mm -hmm. um, so she sources a lot of her herbs from there. Mm -hmm. I do a lot of wild crafting and I grow a few, a few herbs that I know I use, mm -hmm. like calendula and holy basil, right. um, arnica. Yeah. And you focus uh, also on the food and the Ayurvedic yes um, aspect so i'm an ayurvedic tradition. yes i'm an ayurvedic nutrition counselor and i do i have a little cooking side business as you know which you guys i can't believe how many people watched that show and told me about it it's embarrassing <laughs> <laughs> anyway <laughs> it was fun um but i also do a lot of food and a lot of this kind of stuff will go into my tiffins in the summertime uh, we have a lot of container gardening going on here this year um, and so, yes, I, I would make spice mixes and I would actually also give people different, um, we'd have, um, at pickups, we would have uh, potluck sometimes. Mm -hmm. And so we'd give people so food, food out yeah. as well. Yeah. Yeah. And I think, you know, one thing about Ayurveda is the seasonal aspect of it. So different herbs are for different seasons. Um, you would use them more. You know, like in the summer, you want more cooling things. In the winter, you want more warming things. Um, so Linny knows all about that, and she adjusts her food that she makes um, to take that into account. Um, or if she is doing a consultation with you, um, you know, she's looking at those kinds of things too. And also food comes up seasonally, as you know, from growing a garden. You know, first are the lettuces, well, the strawberries will come early. Lettuces come up right away. Um, our fall vegetables come later, so you're eating them later, you know. So there's also a seasonality to how food grows, just like the herbs in the wild. Lenny also runs a wellness center in South Londonderry, a short distance away, okay. which uses their produce. That kind of stuff. <laughs> the magic stuff. The potions and lotions. Here I am, I made some scar healing salve this morning. And what I used in there was some St. John's wort. These are picked last summer. And arnica, which I grew. And those are in um, olive oil that I've had soaking. I also use calendula oil and comfrey oil. And then I put some beeswax in here, melt it. This is all measured out, of course. Beeswax, melt that add the oils into that, and when it's all nicely melted together, I just pour them into these little jars, and then I have uh, lids that I put on, and a label that I'll put on, and voila, there you go. You have a product that you can use for your skin to heal scars. And my business is, oh sorry, my business is lotusmoonvermont.com. It's a bit of a change of gears for a CSA, but one that works. For the GNAT TV News Project, I'm Andrew McKeever. Mm -hmm.